Hello, my name is Maria Schmitz. Welcome to Dub Poetry's Global Impact today. The relationship between music and poetry is best illustrated by dub poetry. But for some, I might have to digress a bit and say just what dub poetry is. It is an offshoot of reggae, as, as the authors describe it. It is the pared down instrumental remix with an echo or reverb effect. If you ask Wikipedia, you'll hear dub poetry is a form of performance poetry of West Indian origin. It evolved out of dub music in Kingston, Jamaica in the 1970s, as well as in London, England and Toronto, Canada, cities which have large populations of Caribbean immigrants. To return to the topic of the relationship between music and poetry, one of the most famous writers of dub poetry, Linton Kwesi Johnson, called LKJ, confesses that he entered the world of reggae not as a musician, singer or songwriter, but as a poet. In fact, he continues, nearly all his reggae recordings began their life as poems rather than musical compositions. As a reggae artist, he remained active on the poetry scene. Inevitably, however, his success as a reggae artist has overshadowed his reputation as a poet. LKJ's international influence cannot be overstated. In fact, his and the work of others is taught in schools and universities. This is how resounding it is. So you might say reggae and dub are the same thing, especially if one echoes the other. However, the authors point out two major differences. While Bob Marley, Jimmy Cliff, Peter Tosh and Burning Spear and other reggae artists inspired hope, exhorting others to fight for a better future, reggae still has a strong belief in the intervention of the Almighty and a root thematic specifically focused on Ethiopia as the domain of Haile Selassie. Dub does not. Secondly, dub is said to have initially created a form of escapism, especially for people who had few prospects of gainful employment. The emergence of dub poetry out of Jamaica's music culture, however, de-emphasized escapism and fomented its political energies. One famous dub artist, Sefanaya, said that he owed his success to Bob Marley because the singer had sent him an encouraging letter when he was a schoolboy. The core of dub poetry is said to be its uncompromising and demanding stand. One poet, dubbed Rastafari dub poet, musician, actor, educator and radio host, maintains his political stance through the posting of items such as a quote from Marcus Garvey, a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. The range of issues focused on by the more politically minded include unequal educational opportunities, women's rights, animal rights, sexual abuse, especially of children, police arbitrariness, the state of whistleblowers, and possible future environmental catastrophes. This list is, of course, not exhaustive. Despite the outspokenness and activism of dub poets, it should also be recognized that dub poetry is not always political in the activist sense. The lyrics cover the entire range of human emotions, and dub poets are equally able to observe everyday Jamaican life from a veranda, as Jean Binter Breeze, 1956 to 2021, did in her last poetry collection, The Veranda Poems, published in 2016, five years before her death, in her homeland in 2021. Her poetry, dub or not, and exuberant inimitable performance of it reached audiences way beyond the literati. She was adored and drew massive crowds for decades in Britain. News of her death appeared in newspapers on both sides of the Atlantic, from the Guardian to the New York Times, which called her the first woman of dub poetry in its obituary. Dub poets have similarly proven to be experimental in their art, and one can find this as well in Breeze's The Fifth Figure, published in 2006, which is a hybrid text of poetry and fiction that re-narrates Jamaica's colonial history. This dramatic monologue demonstrates the creative and aesthetic potential of dub poetry in a way that is striking, but which adds to the difficulty of a definitive definition of the genre. The fundamental and lasting appeal of dub poetry might therefore well be that it is a genre that retains global street cred and the political commitment to speak out 
in what has been described as Fanonian revolutionary politics. Moreover, the volume also contains an absorbing article on the late Lee Scratch Perry, which makes it well worth exploring. <laughs>